Welcome back to another edition of Retail Therapy on the Sunday Scaries podcast feed. My name's Will DeFreeze. To my right, my co-host, Barrett Dudley. Barrett, welcome back. Hey, what's going on? It's good to be here. It is. It, this, this has turned into one of my favorite recordings of the week, or the weeks, I will say. And having the off week, it's just like, I feel like there's just something gaping in my schedule. I, I kind of miss it. Yeah. I yeah. want to talk about vibes and stuff, and I just don't know where to do it. Well, it, it it's also hard because as we were, you know, kind of talking about off mic, just pre-pod, the vibes are, they're shifting all the time. I know. It just does not stop. I think we need to get some kind of correspondent on the street to just so let us know. It, it's like, you know, if you're, when you're... It, Every other week, I don't know if that's enough to cover the constantly shifting vibes. That's the thing about it. I I, I can't get a beat on how much people understand the vibe sh- the vibe shift uh, as a internet <laughs> slang meme kind of format, and I really want to use it on the Sunday Scaries Instagram. Uh-huh. But I'm like, are people just gonna are people gonna understand this, or are we just taking this too far? And I think I'm just gonna have to give it a test. Uh, you maybe, should, maybe tomorrow. You should test it because based based off of uh, of a, another you know, another think piece that we're going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. People just want to talk about the vibes and how they're shifting. And so I, I, I I say, go for it. If there's ever a podcast to talk about vibes, I think it's retail (laughs) therapy, whether, whether it's new stuff in the kitchen, such as low bowls, whether it's just things that we want on our wish list, whether it's new collections coming out, we, we congregate here at retail therapy to just talk about stuff we want to buy stuff. We're going to maybe even today, try to get convince other people to buy or not buy. Just whatever it is, I think I, that's just what retail therapy is. Do you, I, who has done more for Lobels over the last month, us or Crate and Barrel? Dude, I I can't even <laughs> fathom the amount of people that have DM just being like, "I'm a Lobel person now, thank you," or like, "We just confirmed so many people's wants to go get Lobels." We I, we saved one listener's uh, dinner party in the Discord. We did. You know, she mm-hmm. was thinking about holding out. Because they're you know specific low balls that she wanted, and then she wouldn't have had them had them for her dinner for her her dinner party. Fortunately, everybody you know they stepped up to the plate. They said no, go get your second choice because you need these things, and it all worked out uh, very smoothly as far as I could tell. So, you love to see that. I love to see it. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I have found one issue with low balls. They oh, don't no. load. Oh, in no. the, they don't load in the dishwasher as easy uh, as other things. Yeah, yeah. I've got a. I mean, I've got. You, you want me to tell tell you my my special format? I do because I am when it comes to loading the dishwasher, nobody does it better than me. How is that? How is that for a Trump impression? <laughs> See, I I actually had a situation the other day where I I've been letting it brew up inside of me for months and months and months of how Sally loads the dishwasher. Uh-huh. And the other day I I approached her and I was like, hey. I tried to have as much positivity in my voice. This conversation cannot go. It never goes well. No, it it, it went as good as it could have gone. But I had to explain that the (laughs) mugs have their certain spot on this side and the glassware has their certain spot on this side. And the way that I explained it, I think I did a good job, but I don't think she was impressed with me trying to mansplain dishwashers. Everybody, I feel like everybody I know that that considers themselves, you know, a very particular dishwasher loader mm-hmm. is a man mm-hmm. it, do, is it a, i wonder if it's a guy thing i mean if anyone out there has a take on this i would like to hear it g- g- because girls just seem far more comfortable with just like the the thought process of everything in there is going to get clean no matter what and for me it's not like that for me i'm like no 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 no, no. That if if surfaces are not facing down at the proper angle i'm worried that they're not getting you know maximum cleanliness but anyway you gotta it's they go they obviously they go bottom rack and what you do is you load up like your 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 like your mixing bowls or your Tupperware. You get one of those first, and then the low bowls, depending on which ones you have, kind of hug that nicely, okay. and they start a nice little they start a nice little you know little domino thing going yep. okay. to where they all kind of spoon each other. Yeah, because otherwise <laughs> they just fall flat forward, yeah, and right. then you just yeah. have a bunch of yeah. low bowls that are just sitting on top of each yeah. other, and yeah. it's just it's just an ugly scene. Yeah. See, we're just solving the, the world's problems right now. <laughs> this is why you listen to retail therapy I know. Is for, for advice on loading your dishwasher. If you guys have any questions, you can always DM us on Instagram. I did something last night that I will never do again. And I, I put up a story and I was trying to get some, some ideas for something today for this episode where we are going to try to convince or talk somebody out of buying something that I would consider to be a splurge purchase for this person. Last night, I told people uh, to DM any of their splurge purchases. To everyone who DM'd, I thank you wholeheartedly for doing that. Unfortunately, I underestimated how many people out there are just begging to spend money right now. And we got hundreds upon hundreds of DMs. Um, 
We'll get to that in a little bit, but shout out to everybody who's been enjoying this. I really appreciate it. We've gotten a, a couple of reviews on here uh, on the main Sunday Scaries feed talking about retail therapy. If you are enjoying it, go leave a review, uh, even if it's just five stars or if you feel so inclined to, to talk about what you're enjoying. By all means, do that as well. And if you want to watch these episodes on YouTube, they are all going to be available at youtube.com slash watch media. A lot of the times during this show, we end up putting stuff on the screen, whether it's products we want, whether it's some photos of some Instagrams we're talking about, it could be anything. Barrett's, Barrett's in the DJ booth, just chopping it up over there on the screen yeah, at all times. That's right. But without further ado, I think we need to jump into our first topic. Okay. The Night Lux Aesthetic. Um, wellness... I would say I, I've kind of described this podcast or Sunday scaries in general to people. I've described it as being called wellness, but, but not it's, it's wellness for people who have blurry Friday and Saturday nights. It's wellness for people who, you know, like to think of themselves as healthy people, but may not make the most healthy decisions when the weekend hits. Yeah. One, I mean, I think it's like one of the most relatable kind of like through lines of the Sunday scaries is like the kind of treating yourself well during the week to make up for the treating yourself poorly on the weekends. It's the kombucha sitting on your desk after a weekend of pounding alcohol, or it's the salad that you bring into the office after a weekend of just eating nothing but shit. Right, right. Um, and what we're seeing is, like we talked about, I think the if you hear that swirling wind outside right now, <laughs> I think it's the vibes shifting. And people are moving away from the wellness, the wellness aesthetic on TikTok, on Instagram, on everything. And they're officially moving towards the night lux aesthetic. Do you want me to just describe what this is? Per... Please, please do. Yeah. So yeah. Glossy is the the publication that wrote this. I don't know much about Glossy. I might start warming up to them a little bit based sure. on this article alone. But they say the most popular term for it appears to be hashtag night lux, which currently has 16 million views on TikTok. The hashtag dark luxury aesthetic is a less common name for it, receiving 5.6 million views. Photo posts and reels and TikTok slideshows feature shots of glamorous bars, restaurants, and cocktails, namely martinis, both traditional and espresso varieties, or champagne and coupe glasses. For fashion, Prada sateen or satin, sorry, crystal uh, mini bags reign supreme with other bedazzled options by brands such as Barrett. I can't even, I don't even know uh, how to say this. I'm going to, with uh, Colt Gaia or Ma, what I can only assume is Mock and Mock. I don't okay. think that's Mach and Mach, but that, because that sounds, <laughs> that sounds way worse. But especially ones with black rhinestones. They're often the footwear of choice and the dresses are silky or sparkly and always short. The food is decadent, hearkening back to an era before people cared about calories and cholesterol. So essentially what they're saying is, Acai bowls and smoothies, they're out. Martinis and steaks covered in foie gras, they're in. Yeah, yeah. This is something, this is a vibe shift that I could not be more behind at this point. Yeah, I think a couple of things are important to note here. One, in, in this article if, uh, on Glossy here, if, if you read through it, kind of make sure to frame it this way. But th they're not saying that this has replaced the wellness trend. In fact, they say the opposite, that the wellness trend is still the the dominant strain, yes. if you will, the dominant variant. Okay. This is a new bubbling variant that is that is on its way to to taking over and becoming potentially the 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 leader, if you will. You know what I mean? So it's this is this is this is a almost like a counter trend, uh, and and a, a response to the wellness, a bit of a backlash. But it's like it's on the rise out there. It's making waves. It's gaining steam because I think in the grand scheme of things for TikTok, something with 15, 16 million views, that's that's really low. I yeah, mean, that's not are, even that. There high. are whole videos that have four million views on them. You have 10 million views. I don't know. I, my, my those reference points might even be really low. But like it's it, this is th this is in the margins right now, I feel like as a trend and it's on its way to potentially booting the whole wellness thing, which as ever, we all know is just has reached the point of ubiquity now. So it's, it's, it's all we see essentially. I just, I just feel like every single post that I see on Instagram these days is something that is something to do with wellness or people trying to explain how healthy they are and stuff like that. I kind of like the idea of more unhinged, blurry photos of martinis floating around. Have you noticed this on your feed that people are doing more of this or is this just something trying to get, are they just trying to inject this into our psyche so that they have something to talk about with the more shifting vibes? So I, the, on on my, you know, I've got kind of two feeds that I look at on Instagram, my personal one and, and then one that I have for for Club Cool. And I thought you were going to say you had a Finsta. And I, I was going to no, get no really Finsta. excited. <laughs> uh, and I, I would say that that both of them are are 
really directional for fashion and style in particular, almost like more than lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so I don't really feel like I see either of these a whole lot at the moment, but I, but, but I definitely understand the sense of like, typically what I'm seeing from, from female influencers, like the, the ones that have kind of dominated over the last five years, whether that's like Rocky Barnes or Devin Brugman or, or any number of like bachelor ladies that have kind of turned it into a career mm -hmm. is very much like the sunny beachy I'm mostly staying healthy and eating really clean. Even when I'm on my trips to Tulum, right? Like I, it, it's that, I, it, even if it's like less yoga and green juice, it's still very much like, it, it's still very Zen. And this has more of that, that kind of chaotic nightlife scene. I f I follow uh, very few Love Island characters or characters uh, cast members on Instagram. One that I do follow is Molly May, as she is the queen bee of all Love Island stuff. And she okay. was just in Tulum for about three straight weeks. I've never <laughs> seen a performance like it. She, I think there she was there on work. But I, I finally asked Sally, who's absolutely obsessed with her. I was like, "Is Molly May ever leaving Tulum?" Which is a sentence that I'd never pictured myself saying before the pandemic even hit. I think this is much more. Is this? Uh, do I have the right? You have Molly the right. May you here? have the correct Molly yeah. May. Yeah, she's just been in Tulum for months on end. Okay. Like it, she's right. never leaving. Um, but I almost feel like this aesthetic is bubbling up more overseas right now. I almost feel like it's more of a European thing that people are doing. Uh, I follow a lot of random accounts, and they are, a lot of these accounts have to do with. Um, I, I hate what I'm about to say. A lot of these accounts have to do with just vibey photos. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, you know, cool, like, ho cool hotel bars, boards. like mood things boards. like that. Yeah. And this is where I see it popping up the most that people are kind of over the green drink sitting next to a laptop and they're more likely to post uh, like a tray of oysters with the, I think the, the one thing from this article that I think they nail is that it's not champagne and champagne glasses. It's champagne and coupe glasses. Mm. There's something a little more baller about having champagne in a coupe glass versus champagne in just a regular glass. Well, I, I, everybody has been predicting and talking about to the point of like almost trying to force the idea of like post pandemic life uh, being uh, a, a new version of the roaring 20s, right? Mm -hmm. We love the par parallel. It was the 20s then, it's the 20s now. And so uh, to, to, to some degree, I feel like people are are like trying to make fetch happen mm -hmm. in a way, mm -hmm. and I, and and this is again, I think it speaks to the fact that this is this is out there. Whether or not it becomes dominant is almost yet to see. Um, but but yeah, it's definitely. I, I feel like the coupe glass speaks a little bit to that that idea of it, it's there. There's something about this, like you know, it, it's 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 reverting back to, to the pre wellness. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like, I, I feel like the coupe glass over the champagne glass makes it feel throwback in a way that, that fits the aesthetic really well. Whereas like champagne glasses almost feel too, like too yachty or, or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have that kind of one of the, what's the, one of the, 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 the hashtags here is something about like dark it's got the word dark. Yeah, in it. there's something like that. It was uh, it was dark luxury aesthetic. Dark luxury aesthetic. Yeah, the 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 flutes, a champagne flute, doesn't go into that hashtag. Whereas, like now, I imagine a champagne the coupe glass in the corner booth with like red leather seats, like that fits. Dark, a champagne glass for me now, aesthetic. I think of it as be standing at a wedding, talking to people yeah. in a circle. Whereas a coupe glass, it's like, no, I'm going to get sloppy at this table real quick. Yeah. And I'm probably going to spill a little bit because the opening at the top of this glass is just much, much wider. I, I also, I got to, I got to shout two people here for that, that when I was going through this article, it really reminded me and, and to a degree they, they either kind of led this charge or were just way ahead of it or never went fully into the wellness thing and we're just staying true to themselves but everything i'm reading here and everything that i'm describing here and a lot of the 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 pictures that i'm seeing remind me a lot of emily radikowski pre-baby okay do you i don't know how like you know i'm outing myself as as a religious follower of hers uh naturally um but most of her stuff was it was a lot of going out it was a lot of italian restaurants mm -hmm. with dark scenery and lots of drinks and dancing and like it really like she was never posting about going to a yoga class or like drinking a matcha latte. Do you know yes. what I mean? No, I know like, exactly what you're talking about because I've used several of her old photos for Sunday Scaries memes at this point. And yeah. like so many of them back in the day were exactly what you're saying. It wasn't it wasn't her doing like 
or like, I mean, now I, I feel like she, her content now, I feel like she's actually taken a step back. She, she from has. Stuff. She okay. has. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's just different, but she did used to have that. I mean, there's a, there's a million people that are doing this right now and I, I am going to view and like every single photo. I mean, the other friend of the company, uh, n not quite as, as, uh, as famous of a name, I hope she doesn't mind being mentioned, but this is also like straight up former Grand X intern, Emily Clow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's a person on, on Instagram or on Twitter who I follow, uh, her at is literally just martini posting. Okay. That is not what she does. Like it's not a martini account, but the fact that that's her ad is hilarious to me because what she does and something I like is she just posts pretty much a martini every single weekend from a nice looking restaurant. I mean, she, she had one recently that was just, uh, it was a martini in front of a steak with what I believe was foie gras on top of it. I, as I'm scrolling, trying to find it March 5th, she says real martini head hours. And it's just a nice restaurant with a crab cake in front of her and a <laughs> martini. And I'm like, yeah, this is the content that I want. Your sunglasses Damn. next to a martini glass are looking very pleasing right now. You know, it, it, well, it is spring break and it is 3.40 p.m. Do, do we like have to go get martinis after this? Because I'm getting the craving. Um, <laughs> do you know what? You know, when we lived the hashtag Night Lux life was at Lavo in Las Vegas. That My was, God. That was the best espresso martini I've ever had. And it was served in a coupe glass now that I'm thinking about it. And, uh, you know, that that was... That, I only that, serve that was martinis. us getting getting us getting in on the trend, I guess. If you come over to my place and you have a martini, I only serve them in coupe glasses. We <laughs> do not own martini glasses. I have no intention to. I love it out of a coupe glass. And that is what I will be doing. Uh, they also had what the vessels for drinks to me is very important. I love knowing what a, what what container or what glass the cocktail comes in before it arrives. If something arrives in a martini glass, I'm kind of always a little bummed unless it's a martini. Um, the glassware that I've really been trying to get lately, and maybe this is a good wish list item for me, is the ultra wide and kind of squatty looking red wine glasses. I think they're only supposed to be used for certain red wines. I don't know, like a, a Cote de Rhone. And they are red? They are no, no, no. Glasses? These are just regular oh, they're glasses. they're red wine. But they're, a red, they're red wine glasses. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they had those at Lava when we were there mm. a couple weekends ago. And like, I, all I want to do is just chug red wine out of it the entire time. Yeah. That was a dangerous <laughs> dinner. <laughs> I think I took some pretty nice uh, Night Lux aesthetic you photos did. at that yeah, dinner. Yeah, I, might need yeah. to start, I might need to post some of those uh, on the I, Sunday I, I saw story. one of them that, that featured uh, not only oysters, but like the full on um, seafood tower. When you Which, get a, again, we, like that's how you really that's how that's how you go from night lux to to dark luxury aesthetic. You, night lux, tray of oysters, dark luxury aesthetic, whole ass seafood tower. Yeah, that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of bad boy, bad girl shit. Um, <sighs> but yeah, if you have, I mean, you gotta you gotta drop them on the people if you have if you have more from from that from that night lux evening. I've always said if there's a seafood tower around, you have to portrait mode it immediately. Yeah, that's yeah. just that's just kind of the the way that I operate. Um, they also said, uh, th this was to, to end the article, it said, wellness has become really performative in that it's not actually working for everyone and it can become stressful in a way. There's a general consensus now where a lot of people are viewing that girl thing as just a performance on TikTok. Going out for me is my de-stressor. I can laugh. I can have fun. I can dance. And that is my form of self-care. That is exactly the listener that I'm trying to achieve and find for this very podcast. Yeah, I would. Um, I I hope that this means uh, that uh, that old coffee enema anti-vaxxer Emily Oberg is on her way out. Um, <laughs> Don't get me started. And I, I, there, there is another quote here that that kind of that I, I, I just wanted to, to mention here if I can find it. It's oh, here we go. According to Shay Marie, her Instagram aesthetic is, quote, much more candid in the moment and unedited than it used to be in the past. And that's that that's that word candid is another one that I think about when I think about this kind of movement mm -hmm. is that like the, the, the photos are far less filtered, airbrushed, posed, et cetera. It is that like blurriness that like spur of the moment you caught the moment, you know, you you it, it's and, and it just it helps convey that like it, it helps convey the night out. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm hmm. So, and uh, I mean, I, I actually made a note about this. I almost feel like this can easily become a very popular aesthetic for people to have because iPhone photography is just getting so much more elevated now because mm -hmm. you can take photos at night and they turn out crisp and clear right, now. Right. Yeah. So I think we're about to be seeing an uprising in this because now if you're taking a photo with your iPhone nine, it's going to come out blurry and everyone's going to know that you're just still rocking the iPhone nine <laughs> as people are upgrading. It's all going to start filtering into this darker kind yeah, of moodier yeah. thing. 
Uh, let's move on to our friends over at Theragun. Do not stress or do not let stress of daily life weigh on your body, whether you're an elite athlete or someone just like me trying to make it through the day tension-free, Theragun can help. Theragun is a handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle, muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power, and it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. The Gen 4 Theragun doesn't just feel good. It gets to the source of the pain by releasing tension using Theragun's signature percussive therapy, which goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. So whether you're just trying to treat muscle tension from working out like me, an injury, or the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. The OLED screen and design make you feel like you're holding something from the future. You just go to their site and check it out. And the Theragun app learns from your behaviors and suggests guided routines. I actually almost brought my Theragun to Las Vegas, knowing that we were going to have some late nights, a lot of walking around, a round of golf. Yeah. I didn't bring it. And the first thing I did when I got home was I Theragunned my, almost my entire body. <laughs> uh, I had my wife do my back. And when she does that, it always just feels like, I mean, it takes about five minutes of Theragunning all the muscles on my back before I feel like I just got a full on sports massage. It's an amazing product, one that I use often. They're trusted by 250 professional sports teams like Real Madrid and elite athletes like Paul George, DeAndre Hopkins, Maria Sharapova, and hundreds and thousands of customers and me. Try Theragun for 30 days, starting at $199. Go to therabody.com slash scaries right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash scaries. therabody.com slash scaries. All right, Barrett, new well, segment alert. Yeah, but before we get to the new segment, I actually, yes. I, I did, I'm just going to, I'm going to circle back, uh, pun intended, real quick, <laughs> because we, we missed, the, somebody on Instagram, a meme account called, uh, let's see, Laugh Landing, Okay, did a starter pack for the, uh, the Night Lux girl. Yes, I saw this, and I'm glad that you circled back to bring this and up. And I just, I, I wanted to read the caption real quick because it it made me laugh. Um, it's 2022. Don't be surprised if the Annabelle's bathroom selfies continue. Prada is the new Gucci for her. Photo dumps include charcuterie boy, boards, oysters, carbone rigatonis, truffle pastas. Can never resist an ultra fro frogla? Ultra Frogla Mirror. I'll look that up while you finish reading the caption. Obsessed with a new minimalistic skincare routine by 4AM Skin. If you ever find yourself on a date with her, do yourself a favor and save time by keeping the espresso martinis coming every 15 minutes. Don't forget to have Pepas on, to on the top of your playlist for when it's time for you to showcase your music taste. Um, and then the, uh, you know, here's the, here's the actual Instagram. My favorite part of which is spends 20 minutes looking at the cocktail menu and then orders four espresso martinis. Exactly. <laughs> that is a, that is exactly the vibe. Uh, uh, if you look, if you actually look at that, Barrett, the mirror, that pink mirror is actually the mirror that they're referring that's, to. In the thing. Okay. Okay. I can't tell if these mirrors actually light up. Have you ever seen the inside of sketch in London? I've not. No, it's a, it's a restaurant that I did not know about until we went over there. And okay. somebody said like, Oh, you got to go to sketch. And I looked at it online and I was like, this place is a little too weird for me. It kind of looks like a Glossier store that I don't really mm -hmm. want to go to. And then, uh, we didn't end up going there for dinner, but some friends were like, Hey, let's go over there for a drink in, in some little club area. And we went in there and now I told Sally, the next time we go back there, I will hundred percent be going there. These mirrors would fit perfectly in that restaurant. Okay. And that restaurant probably has a lot of dark luxury aesthetic uh, posts from it as well. Got it. Got it. They're almost like, they're almost the color pop for the dark aesthetic, I guess. I mean, if I pass that mirror, there's probably a decent chance of getting a <laughs> selfie in front of it. I have to. Uh, Pepas, by the way, definitely, definitely a banger. And uh, I, I mentioned to you uh, pre-pod that I was at a Pakistani wedding this past weekend. Yeah. Once it was time to hit the dance floor, it was mostly, you know, cultural, uh, you know, m music, traditional dances, traditional, and... we, there was a lot of traditional stuff. There was a lot of, um, kind of Indian and Pakistani type, like their pop music, mm -hmm. which you'd kind of recognize it's, it's, it's got a, it's, it's got a familiar sound to it. Uh, the crossover hits that were played were all Latin songs and Pepas got played at least two times. So See, now I'm, kinda, I'm jealous of this wedding. Yeah, shouts, shouts to Pepas. I feel like I, I need to go to a wedding soon. Yeah. It's been way too long for me. <laughs> Uh, so er, before we even started this, uh, this edition of the podcast, before we started retail therapy as a whole, I brought an idea to Barrett uh, about Barrett's very good at convincing me to buy things that I don't need. <laughs> and I've always liked that about him because sometimes you just need that little push. And so today I thought that I would put it out there to the listeners and say, all right, we've got, we've got Barrett here. We have his attention. Let's try to figure out which items you are trying to buy that you're trying to splurge on. 
and let's see if we can either talk you into them or talk you out of them. To the hundreds of people that sent in, thank you so much. I was very, I don't want to say I was surprised, but I was very encouraged by uh, how many people sent in. We got a lot of different things. Some of the top things that we got were uh, a lot of dudes were sending in, these guys really want countertop pebble ice makers, like the Sonic <laughs> ice that you did see. You not, I did not even know this was a thing until you texted me this morning. Uh, Dyson air wraps were also a very large one. Okay. I will be, uh, I think we're going to need to get Sally on for that, that edition of it. I yeah. know you, you purchased one for, I, I, uh, I Laura. got, I got one for Laura. Um, it, it, it might be hitting eBay pretty soon. <laughs> it's just not getting used enough. Uh, she just, uh, well, I, I don't, I don't want to like put her on blast, but it, I feel like she needs to like watch some YouTube videos or something to figure this thing out. Oh, okay. okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it, it, there's you should a tell her that there's a learning curve. Yeah, I did. I have told her that <laughs> <laughs> she says she doesn't have time. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> and then uh, some other ones were like, uh, Herman Miller Eames lounge and Ottoman. I love that one. And I will be revisiting that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but one of the most popular items that people were writing in about was something that I was not expecting. It was an item with a higher price tag than I could have ever imagined. Yeah. And it was an item that I actually searched in early December of this year thinking, oh, that could be a good Christmas gift. And then it took one search before I thought, nope, yeah. that's not a good Christmas gift. And I'm talking about Chanel flat bags. Today was the first time that I've genuinely looked into Chanel flat bags. And I, I was not keenly aware of the price. Absolutely not. Like I know that like designer handbags are four figures minimum, it, you know, it, it, once you get into the Balenciagas and Bottegas and Pradas and all that, you're like, uh, or, or Celine or whatever, you're like in that two to five range, but like we're creeping up into close to 10 on some of it's these. It's insane. I just looked up, um, and tell me, tell me if I'm wrong here and you might not know the answer to this. If a, if there's a Chanel flat bag and it is a vintage item, that's going to be far more expensive than a brand new one. Is that correct or is that incorrect? Uh, I I think that it depends. Okay. I think that there are certain uh, ones that are co collectibles okay. essentially. Um, the other thing that I don't know, and and the, the, how, I, I'll I will proceed to to probably make this comparison in a different way, but like much like Rolex watches at the moment, I don't know how easy it is to get a Chanel handbag for retail right now. If you, if you look it up right now and you just type in Chanel flat bags and you go to the shopping tab of Google, you'll see what I would consider to be an ugly one for about $3,600. It's hot pink. Then you get in the better looking ones, the, the darker colors, the tanner colors. You get 4,000, 3,000. These are all very, very small bags and these are all used. And these aren't used in mint condition. These are used bags That's that right. you're getting for $4,000, $5,000 from the real, real, from tradesy from rebag things i mean there's some sites on here that i've never even heard of um because you, you you can't like Ch chanel is one of the few remaining holdouts i believe that has essentially refused to dip their toe into e-commerce okay so you you and, and i mean like even louis vuitton you can buy stuff from louis vuitton's web web store now so if you go to chanel but you I, can't buy it if, I'm, I, I'm i'm double checking that right now but i am almost positive that you cannot go to chanel.com and buy a bag and so it's just like and uh hermes is another one like you can't buy a birkin bag on hermes.com hermes okay. website like this requires like being in contact with a sales associate and then uh, I, again I, I like i said i don't actually know can you walk into a chanel store on rodeo drive right now and leave with a flat bag for retail price i'm not actually sure probably I, maybe maybe so certain ones you probably can uh and then and, and then i mean like the Another piece that I don't really have a good idea about, but I think you've got some notes on, is like, are are these things appreciable ap assets? More than I could have ever imagined. Yeah. So okay. I'm going to play the part right now of telling this person you should absolutely buy it, even though I do think that it's a little ridiculous. But I was sent some, I sent a couple articles uh, regarding this when I was doing my own research, and it says according to Art Market Research AMR. <laughs> They now outperform art, classic cars, and rare whiskeys in terms of investment potential. Some bags from the likes of Hermes, Chanel, and Louis Vuitton have experienced a valuation spike on an average of 83% in the last 10 years. To put that in context, coins have increased by 21%, first edition books by 42%, and watches assumed to be the king of fashionable investments by just 72%. So these bags have outperformed all of these things by a very, very healthy amount. 
Um, I've always wanted a nice watch. It's never something that I've had. I'm not a watch person. I've never really wanted to have something. I don't like having stuff on my person. The mm -hmm. fact that I'm wearing my wedding ring today is probably, I probably <laughs> wear it 50% of the time at this point. Um, knowing that these appreciate so much is insane. In the last decade alone, Chanel flat bags have risen by 132% in appreciation. 132%. I know that. I mean, and I know in the last decade, things have... Uh, Everything is just going crazy. Yes. Right. But yeah, I, yeah. I would say that if I had anything from 10 years ago and it went up by 132% in value, I'd be very happy with that purchase. Yep. It also says, in a drastic rise, the price of the Chanel Medium Classic flat bag has increased from $1,150 in 1990 to $7,800 in July 2010 or 2021. And for the third price jump of the year, as of November 3rd, 2021, the Chanel Medium Classic flat bag is now $8,800. The 30-year compound annual growth rate of 6.5% for Chanel bags is lower than the average of the S&P 500. The five-year CAGR is directly in line with the stock market index at about 10%. And during the last five years, Chanel has consistently increased prices on its most popular handbag styles from the classic flap to the boy bag to the recently debuted Chanel 19. Sally did not get a Chanel flat bag for uh, Christmas this year. I really thought I like when I came up with the idea, I was like, that's great. That's a classic bag. She can wear anywhere. She can have this. And then I immediately saw the price tag and thought, nope, that's going to have to be something that she saves a little bit for instead. Now I don't even know if she wants one. I get the vibe that you want to talk her out of getting this bag. Well, I, no, I I don't really. My, and, and, and my... My opinion here may be kind of rapidly shifting, uh, much like a vibe. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> sounds familiar. So it, this is, again, to, to, to talk about the, the partners in our lives, Laura is not a luxury handbag person. She has like one purse mm -hmm. that she takes out that yeah. probably should be replaced, but is, is just not something that's, that's on her radar that she's had ever been interested in. So b because of that, I don't really have a, con a connection to this, mm -hmm. uh, to the, to this world of handbags. You know, I know the, I know the ones I, I, I know that you want a YSL on the flap or a double G or a double C or an LV monogram. Right. And so that, that's really like, like as a, as a fashion person, just simply as far as style, it's I, I gravitate towards like some of the stuff that like maybe feels like a little fresher or trendier, mm -hmm. like a like a Bottega bag or like a Dior bag or you know something that is just a little less on the nose. Mm -hmm. But I I wasn't I, I did not have a great grasp on the fact that these things are are an asset class, and that's why I, you know I made the Rolex comparison, and you know I I was lucky enough to be gifted a Rolex watch for for my 30th birthday is not because my parents are rich it's because a special set of circumstances that allowed them to to give me this generous gift and it's I'm I, you know it, it's an amazing thing to have and like I look up that watch five years later and it's and it's like there's no way I could get it now because of the price increase. It's insane. And so it's and it, not not the just the price increase but they're just becoming harder and harder and harder to find as well. So the so if if that's what these Chanel bags are the equivalent of, like if you're going to invest your five or six or eight or ten thousand dollars, but this thing is going to be worth fifteen in five years, then if you have if you have the if you have the funds, then why not? If you if it, if you love the bag, if it makes you happy, if it's something that you feel like is a, a lifelong investment piece that you potentially even be able to hand down on the on the to kin or or kids or whoever else, then like. Yeah, th this this makes a lot of sense. Probably more so than some, flea, you know, kind of flash in the pan fashion bag that that isn't going to hold its value like this. I, I would consider Sally to be an in between when it comes to the designer stuff. I think that she doesn't really care that much about it. I think she's influenced by certain people in her life, namely mm -hmm. her sister, who loves this kind of stuff. Uh, it's never been. I've never had pressure to buy anything like this. When I was actually getting. Uh, when I was getting Sally's engagement ring, I went to our, uh, the jeweler. I went to a small jeweler right down the street from here, actually. And I saw that he had some vintage Rolexes in the case. And I went into the engagement ring thing thinking, okay, if this doesn't go well, I'm going to have to buy, I'm going to have to outright buy this and not reuse some of the stuff that I already have. And it was going to cost me way more. And so my budget was high. 
we ended up repurposing some old diamonds from our family and mm -hmm. I, we came up with a really cool ring and the budget was so much lower than, or the actual price was so much lower. And I was like, you know what? Can I see these vintage right. Rolexes yeah. over here? Yeah. I wasn't actually going to get one and I didn't want to spend that kind of money on myself at that point as I, I was saving that for an engagement ring. Um, at the time, the one that I looked at was $4,500. It was used. It was not in mint condition, but it was in good enough condition that I would have had no hesitations wearing it out and yep. feeling like pretty cool. I recently, and I, I guess I got engaged three, four years ago. And when I recently looked up the price of this used again, and I think the one that I found online was in much worse condition, <laughs> it had doubled in price. Yeah. And I was like, yep, this, this entire, this entire scene has completely changed for me. Um, this the person that wrote in about this said I want a medium Chanel flat bag and there, by the way there are numerous people who did this but this person gave the best case for me. Okay. She said I want a medium Chanel flat bag but the prices keep going up. It's now eighty eight hundred dollars which is disgusting. The same bag was forty nine hundred in two thousand sixteen sixty five hundred in twenty twenty zero quality improvements over the years but an insane unjustified price hike better than saving or better off saving for a hard to get Birkin at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. She could talk to uh, Kanye. He seems to have a plug for a lot of Birkins <laughs> based on Julia. What's that you, th this also, I mean, this is like, I, I get the same feeling hearing these stories and looking at these prices that I do about houses, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it, and I and I totally understand and 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 uh, and to and appreciate this the urgency, right? Because like, I, I don't know what's going to change anytime in the near future. Future to stop what's happening with both consumer goods and real estate. So it's like it's if, concerning. if this is something that you want like you with for for all of these things, Rolexes, houses, purses, etc., it seems like you're just better off getting in as soon as possible because Chanel's not going to lower the price of the bag ever. No. That's not something that happens. No, they've actually gone on record and I found this they've <laughs> they've gone on record saying that they will not like they will only be raising the price and part of that reason is not because they're just price I mean sh sure there's sure. probably some yep. price yep. gouging yep. there. Yep. But at the same time they want it to be an exclusive, you know, society piece that people have and not that just anybody walking down the street can just have and, and you know flaunt. They yep. want it to be an exclusive thing that only like the highest of, you know, you know earners may, uh, can actually purchase. I don't know what to tell this person. Uh, here's my thing. If if this is if it's not like <laughs> if you will financially recover from this. Okay. Do it. Like what you know? That's what why not? It, now if this is are are you pulling this from like your child's co your co child's college savings or please don't do that <laughs> the down payment for for your house or something like that don't do that you yeah. know because there are I, I feel like there are more there are things that will that will mean more for you know in the longer term for you than a, than a material good but if you have this you know you've been saving for this type of splurge this is much better than just about every other consumer good out there because because it will almost definitely appreciate. Okay, you just sold me. I'm I'm fully all in now. And as I reread her message, it, she's been looking at these since 2016 when they were. Or no, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, since 2016 when they were forty nine hundred dollars. Yeah, she's been looking at this bag for six years, and still has not done it. She has only seen price increases. If she's going to do it, the time is now. And I am imploring you to go out and just get that bag right now I'm, I'm also again like and, and i i just want to re reiterate that i'm i'm new to this but i i am getting the sense that the chanel is is it, it's on a different playing field than the ysl and gucci's and 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 maybe louis vuitton's i, I can't quite tell but i don't it, think it, louis vuitton's I'm are getting, that hard i'm to get. getting the sense that like it's hermes and chanel at the very tippy top mm -hmm. i think so I think so. And maybe there's some French stuff like Goyard in there as well. But but that side of the luxury stuff is a side of things that I've never understood and never fully like done. It wasn't yeah. something like my mom never had that uh, high end designer stuff growing yeah. up. It was never something I, I knew. I've never dated anybody or, or been with anybody that's like that. And I've, I've just never really been exposed to it. And so it's all kind of it was very surprising to me when I first Googled 
Chanel bags <laughs> to see that what the prices are now. It just it it blew my mind as somebody who was trying to get a nice gift, but like yeah, that nice no. But if you've been looking at them for six years and you can do it, if you just got a bonus, let's say you had a bonus check clear recently, just do it. Just yeah. do it. It's not our money. We can just say do it to every single person that submits. <laughs> hey, you think they let these uh, the, the, these? You, can you put one of these on a firm? Can you use a, a firm? Oh, God. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. For four, four easy payments. Four easy payments. $2,200. Like $2, yeah. It's like, cool. Yeah. That's like, I mean, you're, you're essentially nah. like paying a second rent for the entire uh, month or for nah, four months. Nah, I'm, not see I'm not seeing the affirm button on Chanel.com. So yeah, that makes sense. I mean, Whatever happened to layaway? I bet affirm. I'm, I'm guessing Chanel doesn't do layaway either, but I bet you should. I bet at one point in time, Chanel did layaway. I guarantee they did. I bet you could go into the Chanel store. Be like, here's two thousand. It's my down payment. I'm gonna come in every other month and put down another, you know, mm -hmm. another rack. Mm -hmm. And then in by the end of the year, I'm gonna you're gonna give me my classic flap Chanel handbag. I know people say that if you can finance something for zero percent, you should because mm -hmm. it's money in your pocket. Sure. It still scares me. Yeah. I I still would rather just pay for it all and get the hell out of there and not look back. I, yeah. I'm not I'm not a uh, pay over time person. No, I mean the, the there's like always yeah the burden of debt is one of the ickiest feelings that that we know as as humans. I think so. Well, speaking of burden of debt, let's add some things to our wish list. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> I'll start. I've been. You uh, convinced me. I'm ready to spend. I'm buying a Chanel flat bag for myself. I no. mean, we should, but yeah, let's just both get Chanel flat bags. I, I mean, do think you know? men should be able to bring like clutches around though. I would love to be able to show up at a bar with a clutch. I, I did it to the golf course in Las Vegas. I put all my stuff in my uh, dop kit. Yeah. And it, it kind of felt like I had a clutch yeah, all day. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, dude, I would love to have this yeah. at a restaurant at all times. Um, I am adding to the list today something that I'm in desperate need of. I am a noted bathrobe person. If you follow my Sunday Scaries Panic Rooms on Twitter every Sunday, you know that I like to lounge around in my, my hotel robe. Um, I got a very thick white terry cloth hotel robe for Christmas a couple of years ago from Sally. And what I've learned is that this robe, which is essentially the, the fabric of a towel, has aged like a towel. It was always something that I thought I would have for like 10 years, something like that. And now I've realized that, no, just like a towel, this is going to get ratty, less soft. It's just not very nice. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it was probably a $40 robe that wasn't made to last as long as it has already. So now I'm in need of trying to upgrade my robe game and a newsletter that I signed up for a long time ago and one that I really do not, I really open every single week is from Saba who makes, I guess, loafers? Yeah. Mules? Mules, whatever you want to call them. And they have a little, they have a little section of their site called Market where they sell things that aren't shoes. Slippers. It's a slipper. It's a slipper. Yeah. And they recently listed a bathrobe that is very much not my style, but the more I look at it, the more I think to myself, you know what? I wouldn't wear this many colors in public, but I could do this around my place. And it's called the Warm Stripe Bathrobe from Doosan Doosan, which is a company I'd never heard of before. I'm pulling it up for, for those of you watching. What I don't love is the fact that it's already sold out in large and extra large. And when I saw this, when I put this on the list, it was not sold out in any sizes. So if I need to do this, I might need to act quick. Unfortunately, I think I'm more of a large than a medium in this. Th this, this is flames. I am. I'm not a robe guy. There's been, but there's recently been some some chatter about robes over in uh, Club Cool's Discord, where where people were dropping some cool ones. But this might be. I like this a lot. This is like, uh, it, uh, and I'll just describe it. It's like you said. It's it's kind of like. Is it a white, a red and white stripe, or a red and gray stripe? I almost think Ooh. it's gray. Okay. I want to say it's, gray. It looks gray to me in, in in the photo, but then the interior is green and yellow. Mm -hmm. And so is the the wrap around the waist. Yes. And so it's like it 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 feels very um, you know you're you're a big football fan like it feels like a soccer kind of does kind of type type of uniform. Maybe kit that's why I like vibe. it. It looks like a Southampton kit. It, yeah, a little bit, <laughs> and and uh, but in like a really classy kind of British way. Like I, somehow these colors are just working together, and it's, so it's like it's a lot of fun. It's a pop, but it's but um, it's. It still works and looks uh, kind of elevated. Uh, I'm 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 into this. I've recently become much more of a robe person. I already was a robe person a little bit when I got my first one, and since having a child, it has made me a million times more a robe person. Because in the morning when I get out of the shower, I've got about two hours to kill with Fritz. Yeah, I don't want to put clothes on that he could spit up on. Put his mouth on. That's the biggest thing. He doesn't spit up anymore, but he mm -hmm. likes to just put his mouth on things. And so I always end up getting like 
a circle of his spit on my like pant leg or something, <laughs> or I get dog hair all over my clothes yeah, while I'm the on the couch hair, with him. Yeah, and so now yeah. instead I have just put laid my clothes out on a chair in my living room and I will wear a robe until the last minute. And then I will put on my actual clothes for the day and roll out. Yeah. So. I, it, you, you make two great points there. One that I was, that I was kind of thinking about was if you have, if you either wake up early enough to have a leisurely morning or if you, you know, if your schedule is such that you that you get to kind of like hang around the house, drink your coffee, read your newspaper online or or in person or whatever, um, that that that's like what I think about when I think of robes. And because my, my, for me personally, my mornings are so harried, and it is like just trying to get ready and out the door as quickly as possible. I don't really ever have time for a robe. Uh, but the but but the other piece that you mentioned is like I don't really like to be fully dressed in the house mm -hmm. like i'm the dude that like i get home from dinner or a night out and i'm like straight into my comfies yes you know like i walk straight to the bedroom disrobe and like put on house clothes essentially and so that's that 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 for again for the morning it's like you don't necessarily want to put on a bunch of active wear it's kind of this is so a robe feels like it's like the the pre-getting ready mm -hmm. piece mm -hmm. the pre-getting dress piece so it's like that that that's the type of you need that type of morning I feel like to be a robe guy. I and I I I have way more time in the morning than I need at this point. Yeah. I also use it after we take a shower every night with Fritz as I we just have a bedtime routine and part of that is taking a steam shower with him as he loves them. And uh I usually don't want to put on any clothes right after the steam shower because it kind of gets you sweating a little bit and having a robe to just toss on instead of actually putting on a t-shirt that you might just sweat through it's just been perfect for me. So, I think it's time that I upgrade my robe and get something a little different than just a robe from a hotel that I've stayed in before. Yeah, yeah. What's on your wish list today, Barry? Uh so I'm going to a brand uh by the name of Nanushka and I became familiar with this brand over the last couple of years because they do they are they are big proprietors of vegan leather goods. You're a big le vegan and if, leather yeah, guy. And if you've been listening to Club Cool at all over the last six months, then you know I'm a big vegan leather guy. Uh, they, they've recently started like branching out a little bit more and doing other uh, men's ready-to-wear items. And so right right now at the top of my list, and, and this just this just hit my screens this week, and I've been like, you know, do, doing my usual routine of trying to find the lowest price on the internet and then waiting, attempting to wait for a discount code. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also not quite time for this shirt yet as we're still got really chilly mornings and still like still good light jacket and, and, uh, and sweatshirt weather, but th this new camp collar shirt and this like creamy off white, which is really awesome, uh, is very, very much up my alley. It's got these, you know, everybody's kind of doing their take on like the Bodie thing recently. Mm -hmm. Uh, this has got, instead of like quilting or like the lace cutouts, it's basically like these little geometric cutouts throughout the shirt with oh, these little. This is so much more approachable than like the ALD shirts that are just like yeah. completely Com mesh. Yeah. For someone like me who might not have a physique that I'm trying to show <laughs> off, those shirts are intimidating. This is something that is like that I feel like I could actually put on and not feel too too worried about it. Yeah, and the it's it's a it's kind of a dropped camp collar too, so I feel like you could throw it on over a t-shirt very easily as well if you didn't want to go, you know, completely bare underneath. And then the cherry on top here is the little like Guaybera style pockets, flat pockets that they uh that they dropped on the bottom. I'm a big big fan of extra pockets on short sleeve shirts. See, I would toss a credit card in there and head out for the <laughs> night and not even worry about anything. That sounds yeah. great. So this uh this little this little number. I'm a fan of this. This, Barrett, this might be top. my favorite addition to the uh the the wish list that I've seen yet from you. Yeah. I'm very yeah. pleased with that. I appreciate that. <laughs> um if you're looking for our wish list, I've been keeping a running uh list of them on the Sunday Scary Substack, willdefreeze.substack.com. There's a link to that in the bio here. Uh, every week I try to do a little companion post on the Substack that kind of gives an explanation, links to some things that we talked about in case you're not watching. I'm just trying to make it a little more approachable and get, get you guys a little more uh, sensory objects to take a look at while, while you're listening. So head over there, subscribe. I don't always send an email for the uh, retail therapy, but I will tweet it and put it on, on Instagram. So check that out. But other than that, I think I think that's all she wrote for today, Barrett. Another fantastic day in the booth. You going to South by South Best at all this week? I don't have any plans this week to do anything South by. Yeah. I feel like a loser. That's okay. But I had to skip my only party that I was invited to, so I, I can't complain too much. Not proud of it. All right, Barrett. That's all she wrote. All righty. See you guys later.